Hello, Dragons. My name is Akim Ojuko, and I'm here pitching for £50,000 investment for a 20% return in my business, The Wild Peanut. So what is The Wild Peanut? Well, in a nutshell, excuse the pun, it is flavoured natural peanut butter with no preservatives or additives. All five flavours was recently exhibited at a national exhibition at the NEC and had fantastic response. We just launched just under two months ago. We've had fantastic attention. We've just sold just under 6,000 jars across three different sizes, 45 grams, 320 grams, and one kilo pails own label. We're in talks with two major retailers, one of which has put a proposal forward to make our peanut butter for over 100,000 units. And essentially, the peanut butter market is huge, growing 20% over the last two years in the UK alone. And I really feel the wild peanut will be the disruption in the market. Dragons, I really welcome any questions you may have, and I'd love you to try some of the peanut butter. Thank you. Do you want us to come up there, or you? No, I'll, I'll bring some. I've only got two hands, unfortunately. A pitch to get the taste buds tingling from Akeem Ajuko from South East London. He's hoping for £50,000 in return for a 20% stake in his business selling flavoured peanut butter. Deborah Meaden is first to question the culinary entrepreneur. Why is the consistency the way it is? Because it's not actually what I would call peanut butter. It's almost a sauce. <laughs> yeah, it's very different to the other, to the other you know, suppliers, etc., or the other peanut butter makers, mainly firstly because it's got different ingredients mixed. Um, but there is no difference in the way it is grinded and, and produced. But look. Yeah, because, the, because we use uh, no stabilizers, the oil um, rises to the top, so it is sometimes more liquidy. So if you give it a quick stir, then, it, then it's a lot more um, spreadable. Sorry, what's a lot more? Are you saying? Because the peanuts have uh, peanuts, or peanut oil, and without stabilizers. Um, so what were you saying about mixing? Because I've just emptied the whole thing, which just run out of the jar. Oh. <laughs> Was that intentional, or is that just a byproduct of the way that it's manufactured? It's a byproduct because there's no stabilizers, so I could have easily found quicker or cheaper ways to, to, to make the product. I could have made a two-month extra extension on the life of the product by adding stabilizers, but I wanted to do things the right way. I actually like the fact that it's slightly runnier because I often eat almond butter and the same thing happens and you have to mix it, which is lovely. I love peanut butter. It's incredibly fattening, but I do love <laughs> it. Well, how, did the, how did this come about? Essentially, although it's cliche, I loved peanut butter. Um, but I also saw a massive gap in the market between the fact that a lot of people do mix things with their peanut butter, but there's no spread to mix them together, at least in Europe. And even the ones that do exist worldwide, you know, has a lot of additives and preservatives in comparison to what a lot, some people would like. So what's your vision for it? Let's face it, you're up against some big names. Yes. So I wanted to ensure that I had a very strong brand, you know, that it's not just a company that simply you buy peanut butter for, you eat it and you throw away the jar. So I really wanted to ensure that it had a lot of attachment to a customer experience as possible. And that's one of the reasons why I thought of the brand and how the brand's going to be perceived way before I got to the product stage. I mean, it, it tastes quite nice, actually. And the branding's nice as well. Thank you. A good start for Akeem, who's turned criticism of his product into major praise from some of the dragons. Kelly Hoppen wants to know whether any potential suppliers are as wild about Akeem's peanuts. Where are you going? Have you gone out to all the big retailers and spoken to them? What's the feedback? Sure. Um, I have gone to um, some of the major... So two of the, two of the uh, retailers that we're in talks with, uh, we have actually spoken to a range of other retailers. Um, so ha just give me a, how so many? F f four, four of the major retailers. And what have they said? They all think the product's fantastic. Off that exhibition that we just even had, it was a buyer that actually came to that event and said it was their favourite stand. And did they place and, an order? Well, that they put the proposal forward. So this is the proposal? The I can show you, yeah, I can show you the letter. Okay. Uh, sure. 
this worries me. Okay. Because Ocado have come to you, mm -hmm. and they've basically come to you as a manufacturer. And what you were doing was selling your brand and your tastes, and out of the four that they have asked for, for you to make for them with their own brand on, mm -hmm. only one of them is one of these tastes. Yeah. And I've... that, to me, is insane, because they could go anywhere to get peanut sure. butter made. So well, how did that come I, about? I, yeah, great question. So, essentially, he firstly wanted us to produce their, their own label peanut butter based on the fact that the taste that we make for peanut butter and the texture he, he really, really likes. Why do they need you? You don't actually make it. You're like the archetypal middleman. <laughs> I mean, they will have the choice to go to any company, but they specifically uh, would like to work with us. Akima, I'd hate to be cynical about supermarkets, but I think they tend to go with whoever can do it the cheapest. Yeah, of course. That's one of the, that's one of the benefits. So I'm sure a manufacturer could do it cheaper. Um, yeah, I will. I'll, yeah, you could say it like that, yeah. A setback for the entrepreneur as the dragons dish out some brutal truths over that less than promising supermarket deal. Will Peter Jones be any more encouraging? You said you had a business before. What, mm -hmm. um, tell me about that. First business, um, I was an online reseller. I then ran an events management company at university. And what degree did you get? No, I, le I left university to, to follow my passion and start that business. So it was, I was in my second year of economics, finance and banking. But I always knew from a young age that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So you've done two years at university for economics. Give me a, give me a snapshot of your balance sheet. Um, OK, um, OK. Assets and liabilities. Yeah, so... Form so, part of it. Yeah. Uh, so my asset, my current assets is um, my, st my uh, exhibition stands and, um, and my, my products that I have currently. So that just is just, un just well, just over four and a half thousand, so 4,600 pounds. But my, my liabilities of, is just, well, I, I, I'd see it as some of the stock that I have as overstock um, currently. So your current stat shot is stands at 4,600 and you've got an overstock of stock. Have you ever seen a balance sheet that says... No, no, I, I, I got that wrong, I do apologize. Do you yeah. want to st start again or do you... Are you going to struggle to give me a snapshot of your balance a sheet? A snapshot, I, I would struggle, yes. I, I will, yeah, I'll struggle to, get, to give a snapshot, an accurate one, yes. I'm just trying to get an understanding of where the business is at. What have you turned over so far? Up to now, uh, 2,300 pounds. And how much have you invested in the business so far? 26,000. How much is your stock worth at the moment? So the current stock I have at the moment, I only have 900 pounds worth of stock. I haven't got a lot. And how much do people owe you at the moment? Um, I'm owed um, just, just under 300 pounds, so not much. And how much have you got in the bank? Uh, 1,500. I do, however, um, have to make a payment for that 1500 the, for that money to come out. It just hasn't yet. So as you stand in front of me today, you've got nothing in the bank? Practically, I have, I have nothing in the bank, no. Your passion is fantastic, but you're in, you're in a bit of a hole, aren't you, in truth here? Um... With 26,000, if you look at it, in basically eight months, You've, you've lost 80% of your investment. Um, yeah, you could say that. I think it's a clever product. And I'd like to try and make your dream come true. But I don't think this is a, a business that is going to take off quickly. And it worries me that financially, you don't really seem to know whether you're coming or going. And as an entrepreneur, you've come up with an idea but your business skills in terms of finance are, sure. are rocky. You know, for that reason, I'm not going to invest with you today, and I'm out. Kelly Hoppen is the first dragon to walk away from a deal. Has Akeem done anything to convince Deborah Meaden to invest? I don't understand why an online retailer or any of the big retailers would need... You're not even the manufacturer of it. You know, you're not... You, you, 
what what do you own? You don't really you own, you own the idea of putting flavors in peanut yeah, butter. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, no, I completely... Not really, you can't own no, I, that. I, I completely agree with you, I completely agree with you. So the, what, I'm not convinced about the white labelling section of it. Okay, sure. Um, okay. So I'm afraid I won't be investing a keem. Okay. I'm out. Okay. I think it's great that, you, that you're being an entrepreneur and I think it would be great if you get somewhere, but this is not an investment worth £50,000 of my money. So I wish you the best of luck, but I've got to say I'm sorry, but I'm out. Okay. I'll tell you where I am, OK? So, come back with the next one. <laughs> I like you, I think. I haven't quite worked you out yet. You do talk quite a lot, quite quickly, and it sort of sounds good, but you get caught out. I just think that this product is one that's going to get you to where you want to be. But I think you will find something that makes you a lot of money. Um, it's a pity you haven't brought it in here today. So, it's more the product than you, to be quite frank. Um, but because of that, I'm out. Piers Linney's exit from proceedings leaves only one investor still at the table. And Peter Jones is displaying some rather undragon-like sympathies. I'm more concerned about you. You feel the pressure a lot, don't you, at the moment? No. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Um... You're, you're trying a bit too hard. That's how it comes across to me, because you're desperate for success. And I hate to say it, that I, I don't believe that this is it, and I think you're going to struggle. You're in debt. <sighs> you're not on the starting block. You don't have a business at the moment. And it's <laughs> easily, easily replicated. So, for that reason, I'm not going to invest and say I'm out. But okay. just take a long, hard look in that mirror and good luck to you, because I think you're going to... We're going to... We're going to read about you, Akeem, and I hope that you are going to be as successful as you intend to be. Sure. OK. All right, thank you, Dragons. Thank you. Thanks, Akeem. Thank you. The Dragons certainly admired Akeem's enthusiasm, but they all thought that on this occasion, his business was a less than appetising proposal. He's a bit of mentoring and help. Absolutely, yeah. They thought that it's not going to be a great success. They thought, you know, it will make a little bit of money, etc. But the goal is for myself to ensure that the business is a success. So look out for the Wild Peanut over the next three to six months. Um, hopefully, maybe we'll see them again where they feel they made a mistake.